Stacks currently is secured by Bitcoin network, but you can't move your, your Bitcoin onto Stacks and use it there, your BTC. There's a bunch of work going on in the ecosystem currently to upgrade the Stacks network so that there will be a trust minimizing way which you can move your BTC from Bitcoin into Stacks and then use it within smart contracts of, of all types. So. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Bitcoin Builders breakdown. I'm your host, Kyle Ellicott. We are joining today with Mark from Leather. And today we're going to be breaking down a lot of what's going on between Bitcoin and Bitcoin layers and helping to bridge the gap and provide you some education on what's to come next when building on Bitcoin. Mark, it's a pleasure. A short introduction on yourself and Leather. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. My name is Mark Hendrickson. I'm originally from San Francisco, California. I've been out here in Barcelona, Spain for about 10 years and working in crypto for about five. I uh, started working on Leather, which is a Bitcoin Web3 wallet uh, several years ago. And uh, it has certainly evolved, especially in the last year when it comes to layers on Bitcoin. Absolutely. And uh, before we get into to layers, Mark, I want to maybe set the stage. There's a lot of talk about Bitcoin as a term that gets maybe used in many different ways, whether it's the asset, it's the network, it's an industry, it's an economy, it's this, it's that. Break it down for us. What is or what separates Bitcoin the network from Bitcoin the asset? Yeah, well, we, we consider Bitcoin the asset, which we refer to as BTC, usually to distinguish it from Bitcoin the blockchain as a uh, store of value, a form of value that originates on Bitcoin, the blockchain, but can really uh, can go elsewhere. I mean, the most common thing that takes place is that, of course, people send Bitcoin into exchanges, centralized exchanges, and they can trade it there. And then they can then move back to Bitcoin, uh, grow self-custody with, with their holdings. Uh, and we view that sort of uh, transportation, if you will, of Bitcoin from Bitcoin, the, uh, the blockchain, out to elsewhere as a very uh, critical distinction. You could you could have Bitcoin as a um, as a valuable uh, object for storage or for trading or for usage in Web3 apps, um, living on Bitcoin itself or elsewhere, uh, at least temporarily. And 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 that says so. Now we know the difference between the network and the assets. So Bitcoin and BTC as we'll refer to them going forward. And I, there's been a lot of discussion about. Bitcoin layers and this idea that builds upon the foundation of the Bitcoin network. We've seen it in other ecosystems, but can you explain to us what Bitcoin layers are and how those apply to uh, those that might be developing and building on Bitcoin? Yeah. Well, layer is essentially another technological space uh, where Bitcoin can be moved to and used. Uh, we work mainly on stacks, uh, that particular Bitcoin layer, which we consider a layer two for Bitcoin, but there are other layers that, that are and can be developed around Bitcoin. And the basic concept is that you can take BTC and move it onto that platform. Uh, it could be another blockchain or another sort of um, stratum. And you can do things in that area, which uh, you can't do as uh, easily or as well on Bitcoin itself. So it, that, that additional layer gives you additional functionality um, or other benefits such as uh, speed or cost benefits um, that you can take advantage of, but always sell back to Bitcoin as the, the layer one or the layer zero, based on how you like to count things. And, and why are these layers so important to Bitcoin's future? Well, so Bitcoin is, of course, the longest standing uh, cryptocurrency. It is we view it the most uh, secure uh, uh, cryptocurrency and uh, blockchain. Uh, and it, it it remains that way. And it will be that way into the future. If um, as a base layer, it doesn't change that much. Um, uh, of course, it should change. It should evolve. But it's actually better to encourage innovation uh, across layers because you can do a lot more, more quickly, a lot more experimental, experimentally on layers. So that's uh, BTC can be used in all these different new ways without having to to modify that base Bitcoin layer in ways that could undermine uh, the uh, underlying security. 
Um, and Bitcoin itself, long-term needs to have layers because if you just think about the overall sort of capacity of Bitcoin uh, as a layer one, it, it, uh, it isn't the most robust thing in the world. This isn't Solana. This isn't something where you, you expect you know, the world's transactions to, to take place on Bitcoin as a layer one. So <clears throat> uh, functionality differences aside, you'll need layers uh, if you really want Bitcoin to take off uh, uh, with the mainstream longer term. Mm -hmm. And Bitcoin's own security model really depends on this um, because you know you need to have a lot more interactions going on uh, on Bitcoin as the base layer. You need fees to go up so that miners are, are rewarded long term. Um, but you also need to make sure that uh, users aren't uh, priced out in mass, right? You need to have options via layers so that uh, folks of, of various price sensitivities uh, have options for how to use their BTC. And, and speaking of, of options and maybe some of these newer layers are emerging uh, layers, we have use cases and technologies like ordinals and taproot assets and others that we're starting to see gain some excitement around uh, developing on Bitcoin. How have you seen these and others uh, provide really crucial value to revitalizing that culture of, of building on Bitcoin? Yeah, I mean, this year, uh, uh, things like Ordinal, Stamps, um, they have uh, increased the design space uh, for building things on Bitcoin as a layer one. Um, it's a really beautiful thing to be able to store data of all different types, whether it's visual data or whether it's new token standards on Bitcoin um, and and encourage uh, a, a wider range of use cases on that layer, which then can be extended with uh, other layers. Um, so I think we'll, how we view it from the leather point of view is that um, before ordinals this year, for example, we really thought that it, 95% of the Web3 um, functionality would have to take place on layer twos, layer threes. Now we view it as more complementary. There's a lot you can do on Bitcoin uh, as a layer one, and layer twos and layer threes are there to to really build on that sort of um, that sort of foundation that uh, is being uh, sort of laid uh, on Bitcoin. And, and now going all the way up maybe to the application layer. So we've talked a lot about uh, Bitcoin, the network. We've talked about some L2s, as you mentioned, stacks and others. Uh, we now have talked a little bit about protocols, looking at the layer above that at the application layer. Uh, how does Leather onboard users and developers into the Bitcoin ecosystem with all these other pieces? What's Leather's role? Uh, in uh, developers building on Bitcoin? Yeah, when it comes to the applications, it's a really important principle that um, users can interact with decentralized applications built on Bitcoin, but without having to reveal their their keys uh, to, those, uh, to those applications. Because you want to be able to, to use an application, but not have to trust who actually made that application, right? So uh, Leather allows you to store your key independently from uh, these applications, connect to them uh, via, via Leather, and approve uh, on a one-off basis, just uh, based on the particular things you need to do with that application, just what you um, allow that application to do with your assets and your, your identity. Uh, so we, we view at Leather as this important companion piece, if you will, to applications built on Bitcoin and one that safeguards users from uh, possible abuse. And how is Leather integrating both the L1 and L2 functionality, whether that be stacks or otherwise? Yeah, well, when it comes to uh, L1, um, there's a lot of work we've been doing this year to support um, ordinals and stamps uh, type behaviors and uh, sort of use cases. So you can uh, inscribe ordinals directly into your leather wallets um, by connecting it to uh, applications that are um, Ordinals aware. Uh, you can, of course, manage Bitcoin uh, fully, BRC20 tokens uh, fully with Leather. So you have a whole range of uh, L1 type uh, features. At the same time, in parallel, you have a whole range of L2 features. So things you can do on stacks that uh, often require uh, STX these days. Although looking forward to next year, um, we, look, we see that being replaced mainly by uh, wrapped Bitcoin usage on stacks. And so we allow things to be able to do 
uh, through leather uh, on Stacks and L2. When it comes to interacting with smart contracts in particular, using Bitcoin, having been wrapped on the Stacks to, to interact with applications that need more on-chain logic. And then finally, it's really important that users can go between these layers seamlessly from within leather. So you might start off with uh, Bitcoin or one day the ordinals in leather uh, on Bitcoin as L1, and you should be able to, to bridge those transfer them over to uh, an L2 like Stacks uh, very easily. What should be a one-click uh, sort of thing. And then use the exact same assets uh, on the L2 within applications that are powered by the L2. And uh, that should just be something that is uh, a job sort of performed by the, the wallet uh, so that applications and uh, users don't have to sort of go looking elsewhere on how to, to enable those experiences. And Mark, you, you mentioned uh, something I want to touch on for a moment, and that's wrapped Bitcoin. So we talked about BTC as the asset and wrapped BTC. What is that? And, and how is that important in uh, the broader Bitcoin economy and Bitcoin layers? Yeah, well, it's critical. So um, Stacks currently is secured by Bitcoin network, but you can't... Um, Trust trustlessly or trust, trust minim minimally, uh, move your your Bitcoin onto Stacks and use it there, your BTC. And so the, there's a bunch of work going on in the, in the ecosystem currently to upgrade the Stacks network so that there would be a trust minimizing way which you can uh, move your BTC from Bitcoin into Stacks and then use it within smart contracts of, of all types. So you unlock the ability to have a whole range of applications like you see on other L1s like Ethereum, um, but you have Bitcoin as the actual core asset in which you're actually interacting with folks. Um, and you can always settle back to Bitcoin as a, a, an L1 blockchain. We just feel it as immensely powerful because you get the combination of the security um, and just the enormous uh, market value of Bitcoin paired with uh, the, the advanced functionality of apps that are powered by smart contracts, which we just haven't seen that in a um, trustless way yet. The only things you see with Bitcoin are that are Web three like in that manner are 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 centralized sort of offerings, and and that we view as a a sort of um, a sort of uh, contradiction, if you will, because if you if you value Bitcoin and you want to make sure that your Bitcoin is something that you put to use over a long uh, period of time, uh, you you don't want to be entrusting it with with centralized uh, authorities. Well, that said, Mark, where can people learn and, and gain more information about maybe starting their first wallet or interacting uh, with the Bitcoin layers when it comes to Leather? Where can they go to get resources and also download uh, the application? Yeah, so you can find us at leather.io um, or you, on Twitter slash X at leatherbtc. You can find me at Mark and Mark uh, on Twitter. Uh, and we will actually be launching a, a new Learn Center just this week uh, with a bunch of new articles around all these topics to help uh, folks learn more about uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin layers. Wonderful. Mark, thank you so much for joining us here on the Bitcoin Builders Breakdown. It's been an absolute pleasure. For those listening, make sure to check out Mark and the Leather team and also the Leather Wallet application as well. I'm your host, Kyle Alicott. Until next time, take care.